everyone. Welcome to a presentation about Bootstrap in 3D on Docs. My name is Roman Schwetz and I will guide you through this presentation. Um, we will talk about uh, Bootstrap in 3D on Docs and uh, how we uh, do this for our development environments. Uh, how we automatically deploy uh, the product and apply our custom settings. Uh, so this presentation uh, will contain a description of uh, automation tools that we are using for uh, bootstrapping and automation of uh, GDN Docs deployment. Uh, deployment automation itself uh, and configuration management, uh, basically how we apply our custom settings and customization uh, for the 3D on Doc server, and some details about recipes. Uh, recipe is a uh, way uh, how we uh, distribute and apply uh, custom settings and customer data uh, for our servers and also a small demo. So the first topic is automation tools. Uh, for our deployment automation, uh, 3D on Docs provides a set of uh, tools uh, that uh, help with uh, uh, configuring uh, base server, uh, applying uh, or installing the product, also applying uh, customer uh, configurations and customer data and verification of uh, the system. Oh, the first tool is install tool. Uh, it's a uh, uh, tool that provides a set of commandlets which uh, uh, help with uh, installing uh, the product. Uh, so, uh, for example, commandlet for install or uninstall product. Uh, it contains uh, each CD, uh, which is uh, uh, our installation package. Uh, it uh, holds our binaries and uh, default product configuration. And it also can be extended with a customer specific files. So on the right panel, you can see a directory called customer specific file. Inside uh, it have uh, basically the same file structure as uh, um, main layout. Uh, and uh, here you can provide uh, some uh, customer customizations, uh, for example, um, company branding or uh, some custom uh, uh, options and settings. And uh, during the installation process, it will be applied on the local system and uh, it will overwrite uh, default settings. Um, the second part is uh, install plan. It's uh, basically scenario uh, which uh, describe what should uh, go where and uh, how our installation will go. Uh, and third part is input parameters. Uh, it is our actors and uh, uh, they uh, define uh, some uh, installation options, for example, installation directory or uh, host name, uh, and uh, they uh, will be different uh, for each uh, separate server. Um, also, install tool uh, never uh, alters uh, database. It uh, is. Uh, mm, it affects only local server and uh, works only locally. So it is quite safe to run on the local box. Next tool is a database upgrade tool. And uh, this one we use to work actually with uh, database uh, changes and uh, 
it provides options for uh, verification and uh, altering uh, and uh, upgrading uh, database schemas, tables. Uh, it works both with Oracle and SQL Server. Uh, it relies on uh, install tool installations and uh, Basically, we are using this one for applying our customer uh, data and uh, upgrading our database. Uh, each deploy, uh, it's a PowerShell module and uh, it is available on PowerShell gallery. Also, you can uh, find a source code on our GitHub. So this uh, module provides a tooling uh, to operate with 3 uh, docs deployments. Uh, it uh, takes care uh, about uh, changing in 3 docs uh, configuration. So uh, for example, instead of manually uh, change some options in uh, configuration files uh, you can use uh, one of uh, commandlets that uh, is uh, provided by uh, each deploy and main goal of uh, this uh, module is uh, enabling uh this configuration principle uh, so using each deploy you can uh, using each deploy commandlets you can um, compile some script which uh, will uh, change certain option in uh, 3D on docs uh, installation and use the script uh, on uh, different servers uh, and to get the same result. Next tool is uh, each server. Uh, it is also available on PowerShell Gallery and source code uh, is uh, available on our GitHub. Um, so we are using each server for um, automating uh, base system configuration. It uh, provides uh, functionality for uh, downloading and installing uh, prerequisites like uh, GDK or uh, C++ runtimes. Uh, it provides uh, <clears throat> options uh, for configuring uh, operation system users, uh, credentials, uh, firewall, uh, setting some regional settings and so on. And uh, yeah, for each 3D and docs version, uh, there is a separate and corresponding each server module. Uh, so you can see here that we have each server 12, 13, and 14. Uh, and uh, they are uh, designed uh, like uh, for uh, to work with uh, the specific 3D and docs version. Uh, next module is Ish Bootstrap. Um, as well, you can find it on PowerShell Gallery and source code on uh, GitHub. Um, we are using uh, Ish Bootstrap for uh, orchestrating our deployment. So uh, this module provides uh, three three main features. Uh, first one is uh, setting uh, server roles and uh, um, components on the local system. Uh, the second one is uh, generating a deployment configuration file uh, that uh, contains uh, uh, basically configuration options for our deployment uh, and can be extended uh, further with uh, some integration configurations. Uh, and also this module execute deployment recipe which uh, uh, contain uh, customer specific configuration and uh, I will talk about recipes in detail a little bit later. And uh, the last one is Ish Remote. Uh, 
So uh, Issue Remote is a client side, uh, client -side uh, business automation toolkit uh, for Tridian Docs, uh, but uh, it also useful uh, with uh, when you want to work with Tridian Docs API. And uh, we are using Issue Remote uh, to uh, trigger some API calls and uh, change uh, product settings. So let's uh, take a look how we are using all this tool in our Tridion Docs automation process. So we already have a install tool uh, which uh, can apply uh, customer specific files and uh, configure um, base uh, system with default settings. Uh, database upgrade tool for uh, working with and upgrading database. Uh, each bootstrap uh, to bootstrap system configuration set uh, roles, uh, configuration file, and execute recipes. Each server and each uh, deploy to uh, configure uh, basically uh, living system and uh, issue remote to apply uh, user uh, specific uh, settings or um, alter uh, default 3 on doc settings uh, so all these uh, uh, tools uh, uh, they basically uh, for example each server and each deploy <coughs> uh, they are using to create a so-called vanilla deployment. It's a system uh, with default settings and uh, without any customer data. And from this point, when we have uh, this vanilla server, uh, we are uh, using um, uh, all these tools uh, and uh, recipe to apply a customer uh, specific uh, data and customizations so uh, install tool uh, without a customer specific file it uh, just create a, a basic installation with defaults uh, each deploy and each bootstrap uh, transform it to uh, vanilla system uh, um, transform vanilla system into customer uh, deployment and uh, with recipe we can uh, further extend it uh, and apply uh, uh, again customer specific files and uh, a little bit more uh, how to say uh, consistent configuration because <clears throat> the recipes they are designed to uh, also work uh, so the same recipe package can be executed on various uh, uh, various servers and uh, provide uh, uh, based on each bootstrap configuration it provide uh, certain uh, uh, to say certain uh, flavor of this uh, server, for example, black end or front front end. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, take a look on uh, how uh, overall process is uh, uh, working step by step. Um, so first, we uh, start with uh, fresh Windows server. Um, basically just so windows without any uh, changes uh, then we install uh, uh, dependency modules uh, some windows uh, uh, options uh, enable some features and so on um, then uh, configure uh, system uh, like uh, win remote management, uh, users, uh, firewall, uh, and so on. Um, next step is installing uh, prerequisites using each server. And 
<clears throat> uh, the next step uh, is uh, downloading and installing each CD using install tool. Uh, with each bootstrap uh, on the local server, we set a uh, server role, uh, which uh, define uh, what uh, this server should be, uh, like front-end, back-end, or everything on one box, and also create a configuration file for uh, the recipes. Uh, next step is uh, extending uh, the configuration file with uh, some custom settings. Uh, for example, some integrations with uh, pool party or with sites, uh, 3D on sites. Uh, and uh, copy and prepare uh, the recipe on the local system. Uh, and uh, next step is uh, invoking uh, the recipe using uh, ish deploy uh, uh, using ish bootstrap and uh, this recipe uh, will use uh, ish deploy and ish remote for uh, system configuration also it will apply uh, customer specific files and it's then uh, then we will run uh, some validation so let's uh, take a close uh, close look uh, at uh, roles that we are using uh, so uh, we mostly use roles for scaling uh, for example when you need to deploy uh, uh, distributed environment with multiple servers uh, you need to uh, somehow say where you want to deploy front end where you want to deploy back end and uh, each bootstrap roles uh, helping us to achieve this uh, so as you can see on this table on the top uh, there are available roles and uh, on the uh, left side you can see uh, components uh, that are enabled for each role so uh, basically um, for all in one box we just install everything on the single node and uh, there are two uh, scaling options uh, first one is uh, one front end and uh, one back end which is quite similar to all-in-one box, but uh, front-end is running on the separate uh, server. And the second scaling options is uh, allow you to have uh, one or more front-ends, uh, one uh, single backend and uh, multiple uh, multi-backends with uh, different uh, configuration of uh, components on them. So, <clears throat> uh, how do we uh, orchestrate in everything with uh, each bootstrap? So, uh, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, we are using roles uh, for uh, configuring or setting uh, tags uh, for components that uh, needs to be installed on the server um, and uh, the, the, this uh, tags let uh, uh, deployment scripts know uh, what exactly needs to be uh, run on this uh, certain system and uh, what configuration actions need to be performed um so the second uh, uh, like uh, feature of each bootstrap is deployment configuration you can see uh, example of uh, configuration file on the right panel so it uh, contains uh, some system specific settings and for example uh, which database are we using, uh, some integrations, uh, and uh, components settings. 
uh, and also each bootstrap uh, contains a helper uh, commandlet to uh, generate this uh, deployment configuration script which uh, after this can be extended with uh, customer uh, settings and also each bootstrap initiate a deployment system using recipe so what is uh, recipe um, basically recipe is a uh, zip package or um, a set of files on the right you can see um, basic structure of the recipe <clears throat> It contains directory with customer specific files uh, similar to what we have in uh, install tool and uh, it is using install tool functionality for applying uh, those files so it will uh, honor and use uh, install tool parameters uh, during uh, applying this uh, customer specific files on the target system it uh, have a settings directory which uh, usually contains some um, transformation scripts uh, for example um, you when you need to apply uh, some xml changes or xml settings uh, there are two ways how you can do it first one includes this uh, altered xml file in customer specific file Another option is to uh, write a transformation script uh, which will uh, alter uh, this XML on the local system and uh, this transformation script can be uh, placed in the settings directory. Uh, like main benefit of transformation script in compared to static file is it uh, can be uh, designed in the way uh, that it will work uh, across various uh, uh, 3D and docs versions uh, without breaking anything. And in our deployments, we are mostly using uh, XML transformation approach. So um, also recipe uh, contains this uh, manifest file uh, which uh, inside have uh, some metadata like version and name of recipe and uh, all these uh, invoke scripts uh, they are um, basically hooks and uh, inside each of the script uh, you can uh, add your own uh, script logic and it will be executed during uh, recipe uh, execution at some certain state of uh, deployment. So to execute the recipe uh, here uh, I just show in a uh, some simple uh, basic script. Uh, I will also show it on the demo presentation. <clears throat> so uh, first uh, we start from importing each bootstrap module. Uh, then uh, we are setting uh, with uh, set each role component tags command let uh, we are setting a role uh, for uh, the local system in our case it's uh, all in one um, then we generating a uh, new each deployment configuration uh, here uh, project and stage parameters uh, they are basically define a path in a configuration file to your configuration and uh, same project and stage uh, uh, parameters will be used in recipe to refer this uh, um, uh, configuration options and find them in uh, configuration file because one configuration file can contain different uh, uh, stages. Uh, for example, project uh, can be uh, company name or any name of uh, project you like 
and stage uh, usually uh, it's a name of environment uh, like uh, development, test, uh, production, and so on. Um, third step is uh, setting uh, deployment uh, configuration options. <clears throat> so this can be done manually, but also uh, there are commandlets for uh, setting. In this case, uh, it's set is deployment font to configuration uh, for setting uh, options for draft and review space. Uh, but there are also commandlets for setting uh, some custom options and uh, custom uh, settings. Uh, five fifth step is uh, mm, it's. Uh, um, not basically necessary uh, to run it on the local system. Usually we are using al uh, already uh, pre-compiled and uh, prepared recipe, but uh, just for uh, the demo purpose, uh, I will show this one. So um, this commandlet creates a new deployment recipe uh, for uh, like a certain project and uh, basically what you get after running this commandlet you will get uh, some uh, dummy recipe without customer data but only with hooks and file structure and the last one is uh, invoke uh, each deployment sequence it uh, again uh, receive a recipe uh, directory uh, pass uh, as a parameter and uh, it will execute uh, deployment sequence and uh, use uh, data from recipe to uh, change uh, system. Okay, let uh, me show it on the actual box. So I have a <coughs> server here. Uh, it uh, well, it's basically installation server with InfoShare installation. And um, let's start from importing each bootstrap module. Then we uh, create uh, or assign a server role uh, for this box. And I will show uh, what this basically means uh, uh, technically, so after uh, assigning all in one role, uh, it will this command that will generate this tag uh, JSON file, which contains a set of uh, 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 component tags for this all in one role. So you can see basically if it's only in, uh, in case all in one, we set everything. Uh, we have and yeah next one is uh, creating deployment configuration so after running this commandlet uh, you will get uh, this config uh, json file and uh, as you can see uh, by default it contains only some uh, database uh, connection uh, details and uh, um, like component count um, database connection detail is this command that takes from the local system from the um, install tool installation <clears throat> Um, we run, for example, this commandlet. It will uh, add additional configuration sections to the config file. Basically, with uh, similar commandlets, it can be extended further. Uh, but, for example, for uh, the integration options, uh, like uh, Full party integration or uh, 3D on sites integration, we are manually adding uh, 
uh, some uh, additional sections. I will uh, show them later on uh, actual leaf uh, box. So next, uh, yeah, next one is uh, creating a recipe. So after running this commandlet in this uh, C uh, demo recipe directory, you will see a set of files. So <clears throat> uh, yeah. so the customer specific files that are uh, like empty by default, uh, you need to create uh, mm, files to copy directory and uh, here you can uh, replicate uh, the ECD uh, layout and place your customer uh, specific files uh, and during recipe executions they will be applied on the target system. Uh, settings uh, directory it uh, contains some uh, helpers to work with uh, metadata config and uh, yeah, setting uh, um, settings for uh, some XMLs uh, options. Uh, and basically, here you can see that we are using uh, settish uh, setting uh, commandlet uh, from issue mode. Uh, and uh, those uh, hook files, they are well, most of them just empty, but uh, some contains uh, some basic, uh, for example, this invoke recipe, it contains basic uh, logic for version validation and also. Um, some examples, for example, here uh, you can see how we are working with uh, component tags. So there is a ish bootstrap commandlet test ish component, and uh, in this case, uh, it is testing for content management tag. And in case it is present on the local system, uh, this uh, script will uh, run. Uh, a few uh, ish uh, deploy commandlets. Yeah. And yeah, manifest it's also contains some uh, uh, like data like uh, Recipe version and name and so on. Here and uh, yeah, those hooks are also empty. And basically, <clears throat> when each bootstrap executes the recipe, it uh, have some certain steps like. Uh, stopping uh, the core services, uh, starting core services, uh, um, starting uh, database upgrade, uh, if we, for example, for example, have this uh, component set, uh, it uh, will allow uh, like uh, database upgrade on, on this system to be performed. So uh, for each of this action, we have uh, hook files and we can uh, add some or extend uh, some logic if we need to uh, perform some certain deployment action during this step. Yeah, that's... Yeah. And to execute the recipe using each bootstrap, we uh, just to invoke each deployment sequence and pass the uh, um, directory pass where uh, this manifest file is located. Yeah, and 
yeah, it will take quite some time to run even with empty recipe because again it needs to go through all these uh, actions uh, with start and stop in core and uh, validation and so on. So let's just switch to uh, another box. <clears throat> This one is uh, basically our development box. It already uh, have uh, deployed and customized system using our um, development recipes. Uh, so during the deployment, we uh, copy uh, our recipe locally and we use the same recipe for deploying multiple different uh, uh, hosts and even uh, the same recipe can be used on different Trident Docs versions. And uh, here you can see, well, there's not much in customer specific file <clears throat> actually, but in settings we do have uh, quite a lot of transformation scripts. Uh, so we are mostly using them for uh, configuring uh, integrations. Uh, so example uh, here you can see uh, example of uh, configuration uh, delta file uh, so this configuration will be uh, processed uh, processed by uh, the recipe it will replace uh, these uh, values with some actual uh, data from the uh, the uh, deployment configuration file, for example. Yeah, here in deployment configuration, we do have this pool party settings. And uh, during the deployment, we just uh, replace uh, these values from uh, here uh, with uh, these settings and then merge uh, this uh, piece of uh, XML into actual uh, metadata config or uh, admin uh, XML and uh, basically to the proper uh, location for this part. Um, that's my recipe. <clears throat> Uh, again, yeah, uh, some uh, helper scripts uh, for uh, updating metadata config. That's not nothing interesting actually here. Just uh, code. And in our uh, deployment hooks, uh, we also extend them with our uh, deployment specific logic. So for example, here in invoke recipe, you can see uh, that uh, we perform some uh, specific actions uh, when uh, we uh, do have uh, uh, sites uh, dynamic delivery uh, configuration. So basically this one in uh, our config file, and uh, yeah. and uh, we uh, configure uh, based on uh, the settings in the configuration file. We run these uh, scripts on the local system to configure different uh, integrations. And for example, here. We do have uh, a lot more uh, integration scripts and basically here you can see a logic for full party integration for uh, TMS, word server and so on. Well, that's basically mostly it for our deployment recipe. So, uh, as I said, we are using it uh, for our um, deployment and test automation. Uh, we using uh, Jenkins uh, jobs. We are uh, 
we can deploy uh, fully automatically uh, 3D on sites and 3D on docs environment with uh, uh, integration of uh, 3D on sites taxonomy and dynamic delivery uh, for 3D on docs, or also we can uh, deploy a pool party uh, instance and integrate it with uh, 3D on uh, docs CM. Uh, for example, I can show it uh, yeah, here. So it's a, a web interface for the same box. And um, yeah, let me show an uh, example of uh, pool party integration, how it works in our case. So topics Oops. yeah so uh, here yeah <clears throat> here we do have this uh, Party extension to Zaros, and yeah, you can take attacks directly from the party box. And so, it's mostly used for uh, testing. And this deployment is uh, fully automatic. And <clears throat> basically, uh, the recipe I showed, we are using it uh, for um, well for deploying uh, our dev environments uh, on uh, various platforms. So we have uh, our local uh, vSphere cluster, and we do have uh, AWS. Uh, deployments and the same recipe can be used on both of them uh, just uh, we just change uh, we, we use a different uh, deployment configuration JSONs so uh, those files are obviously different uh, for uh, different deployments but uh, recipe package itself it is uh, basically the same and it is uh, uh, main, I, I think, benefit of this approach that you can, uh, with the same recipe package, you can replicate uh, the system on uh, various uh, uh, servers and uh, different base uh, systems, basically. In our case, it's uh, uh, AWS and our local vSphere cluster. <clears throat> 